Hello and welcome to Talk A Good Game. It's match period of Wolves against West Ham United. Charlie, could you please kick us off with your thoughts on Wolves, please? Yeah, I I I feel like they are an interesting case study, right? Team who sort of felt like they had the world at their feet when it was all kicking off, getting Portuguese players, all that stuff happening. And, and since then, it sort of feels like they've settled into a mid-table kind of Premier League thing, sort of struggling a bit in time, succeeding a bit in others, but not that, oh my God, here they come. Wolves are going to be huge, which is what it felt like at one point. And... I look at them, they're a, they're a team who've got a bunch of fun fun players who are decent. They've got um, an interesting manager. I don't know, there's a lot to like about Wolves, to be fair. Um, and I feel like they're, uh, I don't know, They just it feels right with them being in the Premier League. I was thinking about this earlier on. This is a random thing to say, I appreciate it. But it feels, I don't feel like the Premier League feels correct without Wolves being in it. I'm not sure why. They just have this like aura of like, this is a good Premier League team to exist. And I'm here for it. Um, I think they're doing well. I think... I think they they sort of steadied a bit after last season, um, doing better than I would have thought they would be doing at this stage in the season, if I'm being honest about it. And they've got Craig Dawson, so therefore they are brilliant in my mind. I think um, Gary O'Neill is doing really well to have almost like a steady ship in choppy waters at Wolves, actually. Sure. And I think for, if you look at the league table, it, it looks good for Wolves. You look at the squad, it looks pretty decent. It's, it's littered with talent in there. Just a few players, not so much um, a fan of, but there's enough talent in there as well. But then when you sort of read and listen and dive a little bit deeper into the finances and comments from managers regarding lack of backing and transfer windows and stuff, and it all feels a little bit like this ship could hit a rock pretty soon, actually. If they mm. don't sort something out quick, they, there could be trouble up ahead. You know, last summer they had to sell players to match PSR regulations. They did that. And there's talk this summer, it's sort of, sort of a case of, like, they've got to sell before they can buy. Like, they literally cannot, like, have a net spend. It's like we've got to break even. And that's no way to manage your club going forward. That's going to put a lot of stress on everybody at your football club because the manager has to then maximise what he's got at his disposal already in terms of his squad. He's probably then got to put a focus on emphasis on the academy, which is never a bad thing and possibly something that the Premier League needs more of, actually. They tried to mm. you know, fix it years ago with the homegrown rule, but I think more needs to be done to encourage sort of succession planning within the academies at football clubs. So that is going to happen. But to put a pressure on such a young manager in Gary O'Neill, because he still is a young, inexperienced manager, I think he's got a lot to handle, actually. And Wolves have almost got, like, a few things that suggest that this could be a club that's going to be in trouble if they get it wrong in the summer transfer window. Probably makes mm. me a little bit nervous for them, actually. But in regards to this season, I think he's doing really well. I think when he's gone in there, it felt like uh, um, an appointment of desperation. But there was an element of that about it, you know, deemed not good enough for Bournemouth. But, yeah, good enough for Wolves. And I consider Wolves a bigger club than Bournemouth. Um, so it probably felt a little bit like a disappointing appointment, possibly, from the Wolves' perspective. But I think he's done really well. And I think the football is, at times, quite enjoyable. It's not my favourite team to watch in the Premier League. But there's certainly been games I've enjoyed watching, which have included Wolves. And it's usually when Wolves are beating a side they're perhaps not expected to beat, whether they are the underdog. And I found myself really warming to Gary O'Neill throughout the summer. I think he impressed me at Bournemouth. And the comments he makes, whether it be about VAR, now he's sort of talking about the transfer window. And he holds himself quite strongly. He was on Monday Night Football. He impressed me on there. And I've actually, I'm rooting for him. There's obviously the ex-West Ham connection in there as well. But I am really rooting for Gary O'Neill to succeed as a manager, whether it be at Wolves or elsewhere. But in regards to the gaffer himself, what's your thoughts on him? I like him a lot. I'm, I'm the, I think I'm the same, and part of me feels like, like you say, maybe it is an ex-West Ham thing. But to be honest with you, his time at West Ham was quite forgettable in my mind. I don't, I don't think I'm not like when I see Gary O'Neill, I don't think West Ham. I don't, you know what I mean? I just, it's not something that comes into my brain. Um, but yes, I, I just sort of think Gary O'Neill. Portsmouth is the big one, oh. but but I just look at him and I go, "There's Gary O'Neill." <laughs> so I don't, I don't tend to. It's a big Gazza. I don't tend to uh, identify him anything with particularly, but there is also, I mean, whenever it's a West Ham person, I do want him to succeed. But like you say, I like him. I like him a lot. I think in a in a world where I think English managers potentially sometimes get overrated, anyhow, 
Um, I, to be honest with you, I think Gary O'Neill doesn't. I, I like him. I, 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 if you'd, if you'd said he was in the running for being a future West Ham manager, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying pull the trigger or anything, but it's not something I would be massively upset by. I think he's someone who I want to keep an eye on. And unlike a lot of former players who've gotten quite high profile opportunities to be managers in the Premier League and, and in the Championship, he's one of the ones where I've actually gone, oh, this guy's proving himself to to be more than capable of doing this um there are people who have failed their way upwards frank lampard for example guy who former hammer as well um who i was i mean also I just, don't still associate don't, him with west ham also don't associate him with west ham i was shocked he managed to get the chelsea job after derby because i thought he wasn't that good at derby i thought they should have got promoted and they didn't and then it didn't work out there either and he's not going to do it again um, Gary O'Neill, I think, will continue to be at least a Premier League manager, if not um, go on to do bigger things. I, I really like him. In regards to Wolves, between now and the end of the season, mm. European football a possibility? Outside shout. Outside shout. It was interesting what you said on the debrief uh, yesterday, which we just did, um, about how their opposition fan should be going up tomorrow <laughs> which oh, you live. can access via i'll put it in the description but it's on the end slate of this video even though it's good up tomorrow early access for those that stick around we are full-on living in a time vortex right now it was interesting what you said about him uh about the wolves fan being maybe more pessimistic and or downbeat than you would have expected given their league position i feel like probably to be fair they would probably say the same thing about all west ham fans when you look at any outside and you just look at the results and nothing else um they're in with an outside shout um, and I think if you're in with an outside shout with the way it's going right now, anyone's got, anyone could conceivably get it. Um, if you ask me who's going to do it, I wouldn't be able to tell you with much more confidence than eh, maybe they will. Um, and at, at that point, that's a really good, that's a really good season again, especially given what Wolves have been doing the last couple of years. It's a really good thing for them to be in with that ball game. Do I think they'll do it? No, but I couldn't guarantee they wouldn't do it. That's a good thing. Yeah, I think they're in the running, and if they if they beat us this weekend, I think they're banging it. Actually, I think this game yeah. is quite a significant one in terms of the European running, and I think it always is when two sides in the same battle are competing against each other, whether it be a relegation battle, whether it's Man City, Arsenal last weekend, Liverpool are watching on as a draw. Liverpool benefit from that one. So there's, I, I always like these games when the both teams are playing for the same thing. Often you'll get dead rubbers at this stage of the season already. And you'll get get games where one team's playing for something, the other team's not playing for anything, or they might be playing for something different. Mm. But when both sides have the same aim, I was thinking it can be quite a tense and interesting matchup. And I think that's what we've got in store on Saturday. And if Wolves were to beat us, I think they have to they have to change their expectations. I think you have to go from mid tables okay to actually we should be getting European football. Why shouldn't they want European football when they'd have seven games to go post Saturday? And they'd be equal points with us. They'd be above us on goal difference. Why should they not then expect European football? And I think that would be a, a fantastic season for them. Um, and I say this as, as with the assumption that eighth place will bring European football next season. However, if they didn't, Charlie, I still think it's been a good season for them, even mid-table. I think having a, a year away from the relegation battle and just trying to get your sort of your your club in order almost for the summer transfer mm. window going into next season as well. And it feels like Wolves just needs stability right now. I think, you know, managers recently, Gary O'Neill, Lopetegui, Bruno Lage, it's not that long ago that we had Nuno at the club. And, you know, there's still some yeah. of these players at the club today. It's that, it's that close yeah. proximity. I think just need a little bit of stability where they have a manager for a few seasons. And I think that could be Gary O'Neill, but it's, you know, not even his first full season. He's he's disgruntled about the January transfer window. So it's something that's mm. the last four managers have spoken about now. I think they need to sort that out and sort it out quick. Um, otherwise, they could end up in a bit of a sticky situation. But Charlie, any players from Wolves you admire? Yeah, I mean, there's the obvious ones, right? I think Cunha's starting to come good. Uh, I still think there's elements of like there's still times where I watch him where I feel like there's a hit or miss app thing going on but certainly much more so hits than misses right now, um, which is a good thing considering there was sort of a relative amount of buzz when he came in. Uh, Huang Hee Chan is someone who I just like, I've always liked anyway. Um, I think he's, he's again, a, a very in fact, just copy and paste everything I just said, you basically can, you basically say the same thing. Um, 
And yeah, I can't act like I don't want to just talk about Craig Dawson, Gio. I can't act like I don't. He's just... No, that's a guy. That's a guy I look at and I say, West Ham, big Craig. Here he goes. Um, but yeah, no, I think they've got they've got quite a few players, to be fair. And there's, there's a bunch of others that I would like. I think Max Kilman on his day can be really good. I think Ayat Nori on his day can be really good. There's a bunch of players there you could name who are, who are exciting, fun players to watch, to be fair. Yeah, four in particular for me. You've mentioned two of them, Max Kilman. Um... I thought it was crap last season. I thought him and yeah. Collins were awful. But this season, I think since Collins has gone off to Brentford and started crap there, he's got he's got better Collins as the season's gone on. I think Kelman's got suddenly just got better overnight. It's almost like that partnership wasn't a good one. Yeah. Hindered recently, I was playing right centre back of a back three, even though he's left footed because of Bueno and Totti at the back with him as well. Yes. Captain, uh, there's a, there's a lot to like about Kilman actually, and he's, he's someone that I wouldn't mind being near the top of West Ham sort of shopping list in the summer if Wolves do need to sell a, play, a big player and we need a centre back. That's it feels like an obvious purchase mm. um, for West Ham. And then Ait Nuri, I think, is very erratic, but I love him. Yeah. I love him. Um, he, the way he dribbles, the way he passes, and he's really developed into a serious player at Wolves, actually, and mm. somebody I enjoy watching quite a lot. And sometimes I think there's a, an element of... I don't know how to how to word this. He's not the finished article. I don't know what it is. There's almost something I can't quite put my finger on where I don't think he's everything. But the things he is really good that draws me to a footballer. I think he's got that yeah. close ball control and I'm not comparing ability but similar to how Jack Grealish plays in terms of sort of luring his opponent in and he, the ball's never too far from his feet he's happy to go around players he's happy to try something creative I really like him but the two players uh, Pedro Neto is just a fantastic player just constantly broken and yeah. I can't imagine what it must be like I mean we've had our injury prone players of the years but I don't know if we've ever had one as good as Pedro Neto in terms of like when he comes in, he's just instantly your best player mm. because that what he is to Wolves when he's fit, he's fantastic. But you just you're just watching him, knowing, yeah. thinking how many are we going to get? Five games, six games? We're going to be lucky to get ten games, and he's injured again. But the player that's impressed me the most is Yao Gomez in the middle of the pitch. I think he's absolutely fantastic. Yeah. I never heard of him when Wolves got him. I had to Google him, look him up where he came from. Um, but I think he's got everything. He's such an aggressive little player in the middle of the pitch. And him and Paquette are, are going to have a bit of a battle in there. Although they're teammates, they're, they're, it's, it's going to be an interesting duel in there. A bit like what Paquette had with uh, Bruno Gamares at St. James's Park. There's going to be something similar at the Molyneux New on Saturday, but he's really impressed me this season and completely unsurprised to see him link to bigger clubs than Wolves. When I say bigger, Champions League clubs are ch clubs challenging for upper echelons of the Premier League. Anyway, enough about Wolves, Charlie. Shall we talk about West Ham? Let's do it. Let's kick off with our own team news. And this is good news. Edson Alvarez is back, Charlie. We've got our boy back, Alvarez has completed his two-game suspension in the Premier League. He still has a one-game suspension in European football to come up, but he's back for this one on Saturday afternoon. Alfonso Avila should be okay. You can include him in your team, Charlie. And uh, Darren Moyes mm. ruled him out of the Spurs game, but said it shouldn't keep him out for too long. A girl's gone AWOL. Um, Moyes said he was back in training, but he wasn't even on the bench. I don't know if there's anything going on there, but you can include him if you want, Charlie, because... Well, Moy said he's he's back in training, so you can have him. Mm -hmm. However, he's gone able well, a little bit, and then we've just got knackered players um, to take into consideration as well. So all that in mind, Charlie, can you talk me through the goalkeeper you'd like to see play, as well as the defence you would like to see named at the Molyneux? Yeah, so goalkeeper, I'd go with Ariola. Um, I'm scared to bring him straight back in, but I want to. I like Fabianski, as everyone knows. I don't think that's. I don't think that's a. You only have to look at the comment section in the last video to know that I like Fabianski. Um, for me, I I want to see sort of Ariel come back in. Let's just let's just lower him in, and then we can make the decision on who we really want to do uh, for the Leverkusen game at a later date. Basically, um, I everything I'm thinking of now is building towards that at this stage. Even this game, I agree with what you were saying earlier about it being a big sort of game in that sense. But I I can't not look at the Leverkusen game right now. And sort of everything I say and feel kind of is in relation to what that is. And so for me. You bring in Ariola, you start to get that prepped, and then you see where you're lying sort of in that game. So for me, it'd be Ariola, And then defence, 
it's difficult, Gio. I mean, we just did the debrief and we just spent maybe half an hour talking about it. It's really difficult to suggest what else you sort of can do right now with West Ham in terms of just the obvious ones. And given the importance of the game, Sufal, uh, Zuma, Mavropanos, uh, Emerson. I would bring in Ben Johnson for this one. It's, it's not that Sufal's done anything wrong. It's just to rest him ahead of the Leverkusen game, really. I think yeah. he's sometimes gets targeted by teams as sort of the weaker defender and it sort of pays off as it has against Newcastle and Spurs. It's paid off. But I'd have Sufal, spoiler, I'm going to have Sufal in for the Leverkusen one. So just to yeah. reiterate, it's, it's rotating, resting, not dropping. But there's just a lack of options, isn't there? I mean, there is options, but are they viable? So Creswell can play left back, but do you want to see Aaron Creswell ahead of Emerson for this one? Not really. Do you want to see Bonner yeah. come in for Zuma? Not really. So it is difficult, uh, but I would bring in Johnson because I do think he's had some decent games behind him recently. Not so much Newcastle, but prior to that. So I'd have him in for this one. And then I agree with you with the rest of them. Mav Panos, who's been excellent. Zuma, who I think is really getting back to form. Naturally, I normally want to keep Zuma out for this one. Yeah. But off the back of two decent performances, I just want to keep that momentum going ahead of Thursday. Um so I'd start Zuma and I'd start Emerson as well. Now, moving up into midfield, Charlie, I've got a feeling our team might match, really, because of lack of options. But yeah. Edson Alvarez is available again. Does he come straight back in for you? Well, he's got to, hasn't he? He can't play Thursday. Thursday. So he's the first name on the team sheet, really. Yeah, Edson Alvarez. Yeah, literally first name. <laughs> and who would you play next to him and around him? Uh, Thomas Suchek next to him. Um, and then I kind of same again. Same again around him, I think, to be honest with you. Um it's in in a world where in a world where someone like Mubama isn't really an option, I think it would just be Kudus, Bowen, Pakatar, Antonio. Same for me. I, I yeah. want to see more rotation. I feel like we should have more rotation after you know the starting eleven played nineteen minutes against Spurs on Tuesday, we're playing Bayer Leverkusen on Thursday. It's mm. like right. Let's bring some fresh legs in for this one and rest a couple of them to give ourselves a maximum opportunity. And you've just said that everything you want to see happen is with one eye on Thursday, and you literally just named the same team that played against Spurs. So it's, yeah. it, it just goes to show that there's not much options there. I guess the one thing I would say is these substitutions would, would be beneficial, and that's where the rotation could come in, where you maybe bring on... You don't want to pre-plan subs, but I do think there's got to be an element of that going into this one, especially yeah, with Mikhail Antonio, where you think he cannot play 90 minutes on no. Saturday. We get an hour of Mikhail Antonio, and then we're going to have to make a sub. Who that's up for grabs? Do you? And I think you've got to be flexible with that. I think you could decide Antonio's got an hour in him, but I don't think you should decide who you bring on until you see how the game's going. Because I think if you're a goal down or your goal up, it, and how the game's going. You might want Kane, you might want Mubama, you might want Danny Ings. You don't really know until you can judge on Saturday. But this is where I think Moyes is going to have to make substitutions with Thursday in mind. Um, I'm just glad we're playing Saturday, not Sunday this weekend. So it does give us that extra day. Yeah. And we might get away with it this week. But I think the following weekend, in between the two Leverkusen games, that'll be more of an issue. Um, but just... I feel, I, I, just to pay you back on what you've said there, because yeah. I 100% agree with it. I think... There are, you know, there's players like Ings and Corne you could maybe put in or whatever, but I think it's such a significant downgrade when you put in both of those players. You put in Ings up front, it's just not going to work with the system. Like, you put him in a different position, maybe it works out, but, like, if, if you're doing what you would do with Danny Ings, which you put him up front, it just doesn't work. Corne has not shown himself to be capable of doing anything anymore. Um, He had one good game when he came on the rest of the time. Every single time he comes on, I'm just like... He's gotten worse since he came back from his injury. Just consistently gotten worse and worse and worse. That one spike does not prove, disprove any of that to me. I would rather start well, start with the players that we're going to start with, do do our thing, and then then you can sub then sub them off and give, give, give up to a certain extent. It's just like I just I can't I can't look at it and go if you if we start with Danny Ings with Corne with any of those sort of players, then I'm going to be like. Well, we're not going to win this one, then, are we? We've basically given up. We've basically given up the ghost in this game. At least if we start with the other ones, maybe we get a goal. Maybe we go crazy and get two, Gio, uh, and then we sub them. 
there's a vibe difference we might get, there. We might get three, three Charlie. Surely there's never a scenario where we score three and it's then go on to lose the game. I don't want to get greedy, Joe. You know? this, sounds, this sounds like crazy talk to me. Um, but you know what I mean? I would rather I would rather start well and then finish crap than the other way around, to be honest with you. Yeah, I, I think there's enough time between Wolves and Leverkusen to, for a lot of recovery for most of the players i think the one the one i've got a big concern about is michael antonio he's the one that i yeah. look at and he's so pivotal to the way we play and i appreciate that can be said for the majority of the players here but he's so pivotal and since he's come back i've actually enjoyed watching a lot of the football not all of it but i've enjoyed watching periods of the games now with yeah. him up front cat in the number 10 and we need him and while some players have looked tired at the end of the game, such as Jared Bowen and Lucas Paqueta, uh, he wasn't 100% against Spurs, but still played the 90 minutes. Antonio's looked tired after an hour, which is quite telling, really. And this yeah. is where, look, he has to start against Wolves. He gives us our best chance of taking the lead. But he, I think he needs to be protected here. I think he's the one player I look at thinking that guy cannot play 90 minutes and start. Yeah. The rest of them might get away with it. And like I said, next weekend is where we'll have the issue between the two games against Leverkusen. But I think for this week, we might just be all right. Um, but it's a bit of a, a, a tricky situation. And we're intrigued to see what you guys think. So get involved in the comments mm. below. Put the team that you want to see start against. Well, what do you think Moyes will do? Team that you think that you want to see start against Wolves, put it in the comments below. Now, this video is sponsored. Let me get a bit more prepared for this. This video is sponsored by Match Bingo. There we go. Charlie got there in the end. This is where it combines bingo with football, where you get your bingo card for the game of your choice. It gives you 15 elements that you need to happen. It could be as simple as West Ham having a throw in, West Ham taking kickoff, which is a guaranteed win. West Ham scoring on a certain minute, it could be a left footed goal, which is all right when you've got Jai Bowen, Lucas Paquette, and Mohamed Kudus, despite mm -hmm. the fact they keep scoring with their right foot as they did against Newcastle United. But not only that, there's a free game this weekend as Manchester City take on Crystal Palace. So, what to do is download the app using the link in the description below or the QR code that's currently up on your screen just now. It's important that you do one of those two methods because then they know that you've come from Hammers Chat, so we get the credit for it, basically. Download it for free, sign up for free, and then find the Manchester City Crystal Palace game, and it will say it's free. Just get that card for free. And it's a nice way of testing out the app so you get to know how it works. But the best thing is, here on Hammers Chat, we've had comfortably over 20 winners now. Um, every week, people are contacting us with a screenshot of their phones. And, hey, 125 quid, 150 quid. We had a £100 winner last week. And even I've won. Even I won. Charlie noticed it. I did it. Even I won. I got the first line in the Aston Villa game. So I won 25 quid. Anyway, links in the description below. QR codes on the screen. Get it downloaded. Get signed up. Good luck. Please gamble responsibly. But it's only £2 per game because gambling responsibly is something that they take into consideration when building this app. Charlie. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's just me. I feel like it's just me because I've obviously spoken to Dave, the Wolves fan. Yeah. You've suggested earlier on not so much but for me this game is massive it's huge huge we're three I mean, points I mean, ahead I mean, of them the thing is it is massive it's just we have to, we just happen to have two massive games in a row if you said to me what game was bigger this or the new i agree game, with whatever, that i, would I say agree this with 100 it's just when it comes to this or the leverkusen game it becomes a bit of a difficult question you know yeah I, I just think it's it's ridiculously big. I want I've got used to European football. I want it again next season. And if we want it, we I think we need to win this. A draw is not enough for me. Uh, we need to win this one. Moyes around the Spurs game. I think it was prior, maybe been after. So apologies, but certainly around the Spurs game, he said we know how much more points we need, so we know how much more games we need to win in order to qualify for European football again next season. I, Fine, makes sense. It's not a difficult thing to do. We've only got seven games left. Um, and then after the Spurs game, he said, I'm, I would have taken a point before the game. So that suggests mm -hmm. he's got a bit of a tally going on. He's got an idea of where he's going to pick up the mm -hmm. points. And if he said, I'll take a point before Spurs, he's obviously thought, if I can get a point there, we're on target. I would suggest that three at the Molyneux on Saturday is on that tally sheet because our last three games of the season is Liverpool, Chelsea, Man City difficult running you don't you don't want to be relying on points then so that makes the next four league games quite important we've got Wolves, Fulham, Crystal Palace, Luton we need to be picking up 
probably maximum points, really, to ensure got European football. Anything else, I think you're starting to hope that other teams drop points. But I do think beating Wolves would really just dent their hopes. Like I said, Dave doesn't really have much hopes of European football, but I mm. do. I want European football. Now, this is obviously an assumption that it is European football. And I know a lot of people downplay the Conference League, don't like it, don't want it. I get it. You'd have to convince me. I do understand. However, whether we've got Moyes or a new manager next season, I think it's a good competition to be in. More possibly, even mm-hmm. arguably more so, if you've got a new manager to come in. But you've got European mm-hmm. football, but it's pretty easy for the first six months of the season. Should be pretty easy. A nice competition to include youngsters in. Mm-hmm. I think it'd be a really good platform for the new manager. I want three points on Saturday, Charlie. Nothing else. A point's not good enough on Saturday. We need to beat Wolves. We need to win at the Mall and you. And depending on other results, it might just take the pressure off the following weekend between the two Leverkusen games where you can maybe rotate a little bit because you've already picked up the mm. points of this weekend. It takes the pressure off. So it's just a huge game. The league is so tight. So, so tight. And I want European football. Sorted. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's how tight it is. That's, that's the thing, right? Like, I would... In a different scenario, I would probably take a draw. And if you ask me after the game, if it's really hard for or whatever, I might be happy for it. But at this stage, given how tight everything is, and like you, I am... Listen, I've been saying it for years. Like, since we first started, I've been banging on about European football. I'm not going to stop now. One, I love watching it. Two, I love being in it. Three, it's really beneficial as a football club to be in it. More money. Look at the players we've managed to get since we've had European football, right? Kudus, Pakatar, Alvarez, these are the sort of guys you can attract when you have European football. If I'm not saying you couldn't necessarily get none of them if you weren't in European football, but realistically, they're looking at you and go, yeah, they're doing it. And if you get European football again, four Danny seasons Ings. in a row, doesn't matter. Danny Ings, big, huge, huge one, would never have come to us back. Um, you just look at it and you say four seasons in a row is a huge, huge achievement and a huge deal for us because all of a sudden it's not looking at us and going, not all of a sudden actually, because I think the third season in a row does this as well. But you look at it and you go, if you're, you're a player who you're West Ham are trying to sign, don't go, oh, they're in Europe this year. You go, oh yeah, they're just in Europe every single year. They're, consist- they're, a, they're a European team. They're consistently in Europe. That's a huge, huge deal. And in the second you lose that, it becomes a lot more difficult to try and grow. And when we're in a situation where we've already spoken at length in this video, in the debrief about the squad and how much we need to work, like change the squad and upgrade the squad and get players in who we need to be able to use and all these other things, having that on the tick list on the pros and cons when players are trying to sign for you is a huge, 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 huge thing. I'm um, trying to allure a new manager, and I appreciate. Yeah, I, I, I appreciate there's a correlation between if we get European football, chances of more signing a new contract increases. I appreciate that, but there is a scenario which is we get European football, but more goals anyway. Yeah, and surely that only benefits the club that when you are approaching other the managers that you do want that you have European football to offer. So we've got this competition here. We've got this even if it's the conference, arguably the conference league would be a good seller today. Look at this tournament you can go and win yeah. in your first season as manager at West Ham yeah. and we're going to back you to do so with this much money in the summer and stuff. So I think I think there's only good things for it. Anyway, in terms of the game itself, Charlie, hmm. feeling confident? Yes. With the caveat that I'm confident for about 60 minutes. <laughs> After that, God knows. I don't know what's going to happen from either side. Um, the first 60 minutes, I'm feeling confident, Gio. If we could just, you know, if we could somehow end the game there, that'd be great. I feel like I feel like we're probably going to start almost the exact same level. Like I say, maybe Ariola might come in. I don't, I don't know what Moyes is thinking with that stuff. Alvarez so maybe Ariola... as well. For... Oh, yeah, sorry, and Alvarez. Yeah, good point. Um, that's really the only change we are. But realistically... I said this before, I, I think there's sprouts of form happening and we're showing the capability of doing it. And you look at this game and you think, not only is this a three points we need, but actually it's a three points we probably arguably could very easily get. Not e- not easily in terms of like, oh, this is Wolves, we'll just blow them away. But easily in terms of like, we could do this, man. This is a game we can get these three points in. And I'm confident we'll do it. We've got the players to do it. You look at the front four. Even even, even in the Spurs game where I thought you could make you could you could say downsides on all of them, we still showed that we could pull teams apart, we can create opportunities with them. And I feel like with Wolves we're gonna do the same thing. I, I am really confident for 60 minutes. 
it's and it's not even just the Newcastle game that's playing on the back of my mind. It's the fact that we're gonna have to take off Mikel Antonio for Leverkusen. We're gonna have to potentially rest some other people, and at that point, the drop off is going to be significant. It's just the case of we need what we need is a really good performance in the first in the first sixty, and then in the second half an hour, we need to pull out. We need to do up on Arsenal. Let's get real. Let's get real defensive. Even what we did against Tottenham. Let's just show that you ain't gonna score against us. It's not happening. Doesn't matter. You can come. You know, come at us. That's fine. And hey, listen, Edson Alvarez. He has had a rest. Whether it's been forced or not, he's had a rest. So hopefully he can deal with the whole sixty, whole ninety. But yeah, I am confident, Gio. I, I I can't act like I'm not. Um, I think we're gonna. I honestly, I think we're gonna do this. Do you want? Do you want a prediction for me? Not a score prediction. I've got another prediction for the game. Ooh, yeah, go, 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 I robot. predict in the 66th minute he will sub on James Ward Prowse for Mikhail Antonio. Yeah, I can feel Charlie, that. Charlie, I'm calling this now. He's going to take off Antonio for Ward Prowse and move Paqueta as striker, and Ward Prowse will go into number 10. I'm going to write this down because I feel like it's a minute. 66. That's what I'm, I'm calling it. 66. I'm calling it now because we've only got 12 players, and that is the sub that's going to happen. Where Antonio goes off and Ward Powers comes on and Paquetta moves up front. That's the prediction. And I'm exactly the same as you. I'm confident for the first 66 minutes um, until Mikel Antonio goes off. Then I'm going to get nervous and I'm going to start to worry a little bit. But that first hour of the game, I'm looking forward to it. There's a lot of our players are in form right now individually. Although our, our form isn't great, two wins in 2024, and it's not, it's not fun, it's not exciting, it's not good. Mm. But the keepers are decent, Nick, at the minute. Emerson's fine. The centre-backs are playing well. Sufal, a couple of iffy games, but prior to that was in good form. I've been impressed with Suchek. Alvarez is back. Kudus, Paqueta, Bowen, Antonio, they're all in form at the minute. I think Ward Powell's played well against Spurs. I think he's been crap for a large period of time. But I thought he played well against Spurs. So we've actually got the, the 12 that he will use are actually in good Nick at the minute, which gives me a lot of optimism for this game. Wolves are having a good season, but I don't have fear of them. Can they win the game? Of mm. course they can. Of course they can. They've had some good results this season. They're only three points behind us for a reason, but we have to win. Absolutely have to. Um, I might get over the Newcastle one should we get three points and start. Probably not, actually, to be told. But if we get the three points, that Spurs point for me goes from a decent one to a good one. Four points from those two games. Happy days. Let's go. Bring on Leverkusen. I'm feeling good about West Ham at the minute. Um, but at the same time, obviously, if we lose, I'll be feeling grumpy. So I, I think I think we're going to do this one, though. I, I really do. Um, right then, I'm going to get final words from Charlie and myself. We're going to do our score predictions. We're going to wrap it up. Then I'm going to promote Patreon. I'll give you a chance to leave if you don't want to hear the Patreon promotion. So, Charlie, can I get any final words? Plus, your all-important score prediction, please. Uh, Craig, I miss you. Need you back, you know. Just... I'm just sad, you know. Just every time I watch him, I'm just like, I just, just this is what you, what you could have had, you know. This is what we could be at. We were, oh, again, who, who cares? I want Craig back. Um, but yeah, no, I'm really, I'm, re I'm genuinely looking forward to it as well, which I think is the crazy thing. Um, I think I was, I was really scared of this top match that happened. I was really concerned about it. I was sat there and I was like, oh my god, this is going to be a mess. This one, genuinely looking forward to. Um, I feel like we've got this in the bag. Uh, that's maybe way too bold to say, but I've said it out loud now. We're just going to have to deal with it. I'm not um, editing it out. I'm leaving that in. No, I don't know. Listen, I don't mind. I've probably screwed you over editing wise before. You can, it's fine. You can screw me over. I don't mind. Um, I'm going to say 2 0 West Ham. Oh, I'm going to say 2 0. Oh, Ooh, I was very close to saying 2 1. Oh. It was with, those, those were the two I was flicking mm, in between. I thought you were going to say 2 1. Oh, those cool. were the two I was flicking in between. Looks I don't like... know why. Looks like Antonio's know. gone off in the 62nd minute instead of the 66 one because I'm close from my predictions. We're not quite there. I don't know why I think. I don't know why I think they won't score. I just, I just look at our defense. Our defense is really weird because it's poor. It's it's porous as is all heck, and yet for some reason I trust it. And I'm not sure what the hell. I don't know why mm. because I look at it and I just go, I think we can keep them out, but I have no basis for that whatsoever. And people in the comment section will be like, What are you talking about? We can keep them out. Trust me, I agree with you, but for some reason, in the back of my brain, it's a completely, completely stupidly going, nah, 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 I'll be fine. So I'm going to say 2-0. Um, yeah, I, I, I genuinely think we've got this. I, I think the, the the end of the game is going to be horrendous to watch. I think we're going to be in a situation where we're going to be hanging on for our dear lives to a certain extent. And I'm going to get to the end of it, and I'm going to go, 
Okay, right, that's good. Now I can pass everyone off on the watch along to Geo doing the review and everything else. But for some reason, I, I don't know. I, right now, we got this. I say we win because we're better players. Our attack sure. is bloody good. Our attack is bloody good. Their attack at the minute is a bit toothless. Cunha came back against Burnley, which is a bit frustrating because I didn't know he was coming back against Burnley. So I was like, oh, excellent. They'll have that young kid up front. I always forget his name. Um, Sarabia, decent mm. player, but he's and then Lamina's almost been playing as a number ten for them as well. That that's that attack is not. I'm sorry, that is not a good attack. That's almost like a relegation battling team attack. A young kid, Sariba, and then Mario Lamina. That Lamina's a good centre midfielder. Don't get me wrong, but not not as an attacking midfielder. Their biggest threat, one of their biggest threats. Is like Nuri, they're left wing back. That shouldn't be the case. It should be one of your strikers. So I think we will win because I just think Wolves are limited in attack at the minute, whereas we have an embarrassment of riches for mm. our starting attack. And that makes me confident. So I'm going to say what I thought Charlie was going to say. I'm going to say 2 1 West Ham because unlike Charlie, I do not trust our defence. Um, and I think they will score, despite being toothless, I think they will <laughs> score. Now then, uh, we've come to the end of the preview where I'm going to promote Patreon in a minute. So if you don't mind sticking around, that'd be much appreciated. However, if you want to disappear now, off you go. And uh, we're going to play a short clip of the end today. Then I'm going to be back with the promotion. And then you can find the video where I did a preview with a Wolves fan ahead of the game. But if you are going to bugger off now, thank you for joining us. Please do drop a like on the video by clicking thumbs up. Subscribe if you have a chat with myself and Charlie. Catch you in a bit. Right, if you're still watching, you're either a patron or you're just bloody nosy. But it doesn't matter, we've got good news because this weekend we've got signed Lucas Bakasher up for grabs. Is here, Charlie, can you make me big? Charlie, make me big. There you go. Signed Lucas Bakasher up for grabs. All you have to do if you're a current patron, log in, enter the prediction competition. If you're not a patron, sign up. You can do from £3.60 per month. You get additional video content online store discount and entry into all our prediction competitions. Plus, you can also grab tickets to our first ever live show event at Hackney Week um, prior to the Bayer Labour Cusing game. Um, all the details are in the description below and the pinned comments. But thank you very much for sticking around uh, with myself and Charlie. Now on the end slate will be a video where I've recorded with Dave, the Rose fan. Click on that, go watch it, enjoy it, hopefully. But myself and Charlie, we definitely will catch you in a bit. <laughs>